Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about my favorite games to play when it is too cold to take our dogs for a walk. So we are kind of heading, at least in the Midwest, into the more treacherous parts of winter, you know, February, March, that type of um, time. So I want to be able to prepare you guys and help you be able to still exercise your dogs, but maybe in a different manner, a different way than you had previously thought. So the games we're going to work on today are paws up, leg weaves, and our obedience positions. I'm going to show you with a couple of different dogs so that you guys can have as many breeds shown as possible. So let's get into the it. The first game we are going to play is a game called Paws Up. I really like this game because you can use so many different objects and really customize it to the difficulty of your dog um, that your dog is at or their fitness level even. I really like to start on something very small. So I have this very small, very wide mat. It's actually just a kneeling mat. And I like to use this just to simply help my dog um, kind of get used to everything that we're doing. So I'm gonna move this chair out of the way to make sure Ding has enough room. And again, I'm just gonna be using a luring exercise where I lure her, yes, until she puts both feet onto the object. Yeah. Yes, good mamas. And then I will just free her off, free. And then we can move to our next object, which is slightly smaller and taller than the first one. Yes, good mamas. Yes, free. It's on the ground right there. And I just got, I got the kneeling mat from Home Depot. I had this mat given to me as a gift from um, Amazon for like a balance mat that you can use for yourself. And then I got these balance discs from Amazon as well. Here you go, mamas. There you go, good girl. Good girl, free. I just really want to make sure you got stuff in on you, you silly. I just really want to make sure that the dog is comfortable and confident with each level before moving on to something harder. Yes. Free. One more. Yes, good girl. Free. All right, this next um, blue object is a balanced disc. Like I said, you can get them from Amazon. They're just for humans, but... Clearly, there's a lot of benefit with our dogs using them. It's smaller than the um, balance um, mat, and it also has a different texture. So I can even make it more difficult by increasing or making the texture even diff more different than what was previously used. So I am going to just practice luring. Ding. Yes, good girl. Free. Yes, good girl. This game really activates our dog's core. And so when our dogs have a um, stronger core, yes, good girl. Free. There is less likely for injury on walks or running around or playing fetch or um, even going into dog sports like agility or rally or anything else like that. Free. Good girl. Good. Yeah, that's a good mama. It's free. Our last difficulty is a the same thing, a balanced disc, but it's an extremely inflated balanced disc. This is really going to test our dog's core and make sure that that is really strong and able to handle different different things, different events that might happen. So I'm going to increase my rate of reinforcement for this one. For sure. Yes, good mamas. Free. And I'm going to give lots of pressure releases, which means I'm going to free her off of the balanced disc a lot more quickly than I would the previous three. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Free. It helps when your hand is slobbery and a treat. Yes. Falls out of your hand. Free. 
All right, let's do one more, mamas. Yes, good girl. Free. That is our first game of Paws Up. If you really want to challenge your dogs, I'll, I'll include a little extra level. I don't think I've done it with Ding quite yet, but I've done it with all of my personal dogs, is I will ask them to put their paws up on a chair. Yes. Free. With this height difficulty, it's really stretching out their body, and it's, which is also extremely beneficial for many other reasons, but it's really using that core to make sure that they can stand and stay on top of this surface. Free. All right, mamas, good girl. All right, look at the next video or the next game. You will get so much more benefit Leg out of it. Legs are a really, really great way to activate both sides of our dog's body as well as kind of get them moving. I really like this game. In addition to that, to increase our dog's desire to be close to us. If we have a dog who wants to be close to us, they're le less likely to run away or pull on leash even. So I really, really like this game for that. Let me grab some food and then we can get started with Atlas. He likes playing this game very fast. As a cattle dog, he does everything at 100. So it's very important that your dog has a really good lure to be able to slow them down or maybe even speed them up. With him, I'm going to do the opposite of a middle position. So I am going to bring him through my legs backwards to the side, and that's when I'm gonna deliver my treat. Then I'm going to bring him forward and rinse and repeat, but to the other side. You can also reward here in the middle so that you have time to change your hands. And then bring forward, I'm rewarding so I can change my hands. And then I'm gonna reward here. Back to the middle, reward, change hands, reward and then rinse and repeat. Atlas has gotten really, really good at this game. So at this point, he only needs a very slight lure. And even then you can tell he gets confused. He has so much more value for this middle position, which is why it's so important to make this picture look different by them coming into your legs backwards like this. Instead of the middle position, which is their head coming through their, um, the middle of your legs. So free. And I'm going to get some more food. And then I'm having food in both hands so that it's easier for me to distribute on both sides as well. So it's going through. Another cue that can be helpful for our dogs and maybe even helpful for you mechanically is shifting your weight to each side of your foot or to each side of your leg so that if I'm leaning on my right side, he's coming to my right side and I'll re be rewarding him from over here and then repeat for the left. Doing this also tends to become a visual cue for our dogs. And I'll say it over and over again, our dogs are visual learners. Free. So they will learn far easier, far faster, far quicker by doing anything visual, which is why your dog can get stuck with um, having a visual cue for down or a cue for sit. That was completely coincidental. He has no idea what this, this means. Um, but just so you kind of get the idea, our dogs are far more visual than they are auditorial learners. If your dog gets stuck and wants to follow your hand around into that middle position or even just all the way over here or is really struggling, you can use higher value food or you can hold your dog in front of you while you get your other hand ready. I really like to exaggerate me switching hands by bringing my, the hand I'm not using up behind my back so I can show you from this angle as well. So hand up behind my back, hand up behind my back. That way to our dog, the hand kind of disappears. And you can see 
by how my dog is twisting his body to wrap around my legs, he's really working out those both sides of his body. That's going to help his core when he is doing anything that might potentially be some type of risk. It's gonna help through all walks of life. If he's jumping up on the couch or if he's doing anything like that, here, you can have these last couple bits. So it's a really great way just to get your dog in some better shape than they maybe were before. Or if your dog has great shape, then this is a way to keep that top up. All right, let's go to the next, next game. Obedience positions are probably one of my favorite things to do because it is so easy on me. I can do this sitting in a chair, laying in bed, or standing in front of my dog. It is also so versatile because if my dog is in front of me is different than if I were sitting in a chair, which is also different from my dog being in heel position, which is also different from me laying in bed. So I really like this because you can really expand your dog's knowledge and generalize these behaviors. All right. So I like using the puppy push-ups which is just moving between the three behaviors, sit down and stand. If your dog doesn't have these behaviors yet, then I will link the, the individual videos below on how to teach sit down and stand. So let's just go through a couple down. Yes. Sit. Yes. Stand. Oh, you silly boy. Stand. Yes. My dogs follow a hand target for their stand command a lot. So if that's what, how you see me doing it, that's why they're using a hand target for their stand command. Yes. <laughs> Good boy, you goof. Clearly Mufasa needs to work on his stand a little bit more. So that'll be something that I'll be doing. Down. Yes. Stand. Okay. Sit. Yes. Stand. Not on me, you goof. Good. Sit. Yes. Down. Good. Sit. Yes. Our dog's typically moving from a down command to a sit command is a lot more difficult than moving from a sit to a down. A down sit requires a lot more core strength than a sit down. So I strongly encourage you to practice that. You might have to use a lure, but that's totally okay, especially when your dog is still learning the down sit versus the sit down. Down, yes. Sit, yes. Stand, yes. Good. Sit, yes. Down, yes. Stand, yes. With this exercise, we're not really trying to be um, strict on if our dog breaks their command. So see Mufasa is in a sit. If you were to anticipate me saying down, then I would not, and I said down, I would not correct him or anything like that for being kind of advantageous. Essentially, I just want them to get into the end position, especially since we're focusing on fitness for this exercise. Mufasa, thank you for getting off your chair. Down. Yes. Stand. Yes. Sit. Good boy. Good job. Thank you so much for watching this video today, guys. I hope you found something um, new to practice and play with your dog, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a comment down below with any questions you may have. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, guys, and keep on training.